On today's show, we are reviewing what happened on the minor league side for the Rangers this season. Major league side went really well, and also the minor league side went almost as good as the big league club season did. We're talking about all that and more on this episode of Locked On Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Rangers, your daily Texas Rangers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked on to the World Series champion Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Patrick, a cripplingly addicted Texas Rangers fan covering this team for 10 seasons, including all five as the founder and host of this podcast. Thank you all so much for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day. If you're not already, you can follow me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. You can follow the show at Locked On Rangers. You can follow my guest at OG Show. Hit subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform and on YouTube, where the best way you can help grow the show is to comment nearly any single thing below. Now, before we get into the minor league season review, this episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. Now, I am joined by the prospect prognosticator, the 40 man. Uh, roster obsessor, the Rule 5 enthusiast, Grant Schiller. How are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great. Uh, it feels weird to have like minor league news again. Um, it feels weird to not care about it as much. And yet at the same time, I I was still like refreshing Twitter at 5 p.m. Like a madman, two weeks off a championship. Like, oh, what potential middle relief pin option two years on the line are they going to keep or risk losing to the Miami Marlins? Um, so I can't fully turn it off, but I, it, I, I feel much less connected to it. Yeah, I, I definitely did as well. Um, I wasn't quite hitting refresh constantly, uh, on the twitter.com machine, but did have my interest peaked. So the Rangers have decided to protect a few guys from the rule five, which, uh, it's kind of an interesting move. Uh, it's cool. They should do it more often. Um, I think they do it every year. But uh, this year, they had a few interesting names on there. Uh, Mark Church, Jose Corniel, Justin Foscu, and Antoine Kelly all had their contracts selected, which means they are on the 40-man roster, which means they cannot go bye-bye in the Rule 5 draft. They can go bye-bye elsewhere and for other reasons, but not for that. Um, I'm curious what your takeaways are from these four guys being the ones who the Rangers decided to protect. Yeah, I, I think those were the top four. Um, you have Corniel and, uh, oh gosh, you just listed them. Who is the bat? Uh, Foscu. Yeah. Foscu and Corniel were always going to be protected. Uh, Foscu just had a good year in AAA. He's pretty much major league ready. You're probably going to trade him, but you want to get more value than $50,000 from being drafted in the rule five. Um, so he was always going to be picked or he was always gonna be protected. Corniel had such a good season that he was always going to be protected. He, he hasn't made it above a ball yet. Uh, but good fastball, good breaking ball. If if nothing else, he's a good relief prospect. Um, for those who don't remember, he was a, a young, high upside arm that they got for Rafael Montero from Seattle a few years back. Mm. Um, I actually did not remember that. Yeah, he uh, he was exciting back then. I, I saw him when he first came over, and it was a good fastball and not much else. But it seems like he's really gotten the slider uh, worked out. Uh, so he was always going to be protected. He will need to move fast now, which I think makes it more likely that his future is probably in the pen. Um, but there was enough of a chance with those two pitches that he'd survive a year in a major league bullpen that you had to keep him. Antoine Kelly, I thought the same. Uh, I was a little surprised he didn't get a chance last year, actually, with how he was throwing, especially down the stretch. But you have a lefty who throws hard. Uh, he's funky, and he had a good season and stayed in the strike zone better than he had before. You're going to keep him around and give him three years to see if he can figure it out at a big league level. And then Mark Church was the one I wasn't sure they were going to protect. Uh, he was probably the, out of the four of them, he was probably the second highest rated than the highest of the pitchers coming into the year. But a lot of his control command profile left him in 2023. Uh, still a really good slider. It's still a fastball that's good and will work when he locates it and might be a little bit home run prone when he doesn't. But the, uh, the control command just isn't where it was. So it'll be interesting to see if that bounces back. Uh, definitely shows that they still are in on him to give him a 40 man spot, but he was the one I was, I was less certain about. Yeah. Five and a half walks per nine last year between Frisco and Round Rock. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, his 
his strike I knew they were his strikeout numbers were good in Frisco. I didn't realize they were absolutely insane. 15 and a half strikeouts per nine in 13 mm-hmm. games for Frisco, 18 innings. Like <laughs> that's nuts. Yeah. He uh I mean the slider will eat. He if if he throws strikes and he throws them where he wants to, he has six seventh inning relief potential, but he he has to work that out. Um he just he can't walk as many as he did last year. That's not his game. That hasn't been his game. And he's gonna give up some homers from now now and again. So he can't give up free base runners before then. Yeah. Yeah. The uh solo homer won't kill you, but the two run and three run homer, because you walked a couple guys in front of him, will absolutely murder you. And and Kelly was a guy who really struggled with the walks throughout his career. I mean, five walks per nine in his minor league career across four seasons. Um, this year it was down a little bit in um in Frisco to 3.9. Uh, and then in round rock, it was down significantly granted in a smaller sample size, 50, a little bit over 50 innings in Frisco and six and two thirds innings in round rock, uh, 1.4 walks per nine in round rock and 13.5 Ks per nine. He's always had some good stuff. And again, like you, I was very surprised they didn't give him a shot in September because this bullpen was just not very good or even earlier than September. Yeah, he uh, and if you take the walk numbers, you mentioned AAA was low. It was low the second half of the season with Frisco too. Um, I don't have them in front of me, but the splits were pretty extreme in that he just started finding zone like that and it seemed to just click. Um, so maybe they just didn't want to push him too far. I know there's maybe not the best makeup grade there, but I, I think you'd live with that for their needs Ooh. out of the bullpen. I just um, I just saw what it was. The um so he had eight walks in April and May each, um, seven two thirds innings and nine and third innings in those two months. And then two walks in nine innings in June, two walks in eleven and third innings in July, two walks in eleven and third innings in August, and just one walk in eight and two thirds innings in September. So yeah, he really, really cut that down. Yep. So if, if he stays anywhere close to that, he doesn't even have to do it that well. If he stays anywhere close to that with the stuff he has from the left-hand side and the angle he comes with, and he really has consistently gotten pretty good ground ball rates and avoided uh, the long ball, you're going to have somebody who's pretty, pretty effective out there. Yeah, uh, definitely definitely a lefty that, that could play up in the pen. I am very excited for him. I mean, he's the guy who the Rangers got for – a season and a half of Matt Bush being not very good for the Brewers and world champion, Matt Bush, world champion, Matt Bush, excuse me, who is already back with the Rangers by the end of that deal, which, um, who was the, who was the other infielder that was, uh, was on here for a little while. Mark Mathias. Mark Mathias that I was so mad. The Rangers gave him up for nothing. I was like, you, you can't afford to be losing Mark Mathias for nothing. And little did I know Zeke Duran and Josh Smith and, um, Travis Jankowski, all were going to be amazing bench bats for the Rangers. So you you could very much you lose Mark Mathias for nothing. <laughs> which um, shout out to Mark Mathias, who I think is in Seattle now. Um, he bounced he was, around last year. He did. I think I want to say that he ended with Seattle. Um, um, let me double check that. He he spent um, time with at least two teams. Uh, no, it was the Giants, not Seattle who is the Giants, that he ended his his season with five games there and a uh, 400 OPS. So not great, but hey. Well, the good good news for you is he's a free agent, so you can always bring him back. You can't. You can't always bring him back, and the Rangers have, uh, well, not a whole lot of room for him, but, you know, bring him back, whatever, for the vibes. Um, (laughs) I'm surprised that I didn't include him in my – Wednesday episode for best case scenario for the Rangers off season, just a, a few names <laughs> higher up on that list, including um, Austin Hedges and Travis Jankowski coming up. We're going to look a little bit at this minor league season, some guys who stood out, who really made a name for themselves and some guys who the Rangers didn't protect on that 40 man ro- roster right after this word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Jace medical. We spent a lot of time talking together. You and I, get fired up on the wins and losses, who starts and who sits. I'm thankful for that connection we have. And today, I want our chat to be a little bit more personal. Whether you're on extended travel, bracing for a major weather event, or limited by yet another supply shortage, you are covered, my friend. Thanks to our partners at Jace Medical, life-saving antibiotics and a long list of daily medications can be ordered in a one-year supply. 
Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. Remember to use promo code LOCKEDON at checkout for discount as well. A verified customer had this to say about Jace. I'm thankful for this service. Supply chain issues caused me to cut pills in half to have it. I ordered most of my daily meds with a year supply. I also ordered an antibiotic kit, and I feel secure now. Prices are lower than local pharmacies, and I highly recommend this to everyone. If you or someone you love would get peace of mind by having a year supply of any daily med, go to jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you. Remember to use promo code LOCKEDON for $20 off your purchase. Shout out to the Everyday for making Lockdown Rangers your first listen every single day on Monday show. We'll be reviewing Corey Seager's season, how good it was, and was it the best season by anyone in Rangers franchise history or the history of baseball or any sport ever? Tune in Monday to find out. Now, let's talk about the guys who the Rangers didn't protect on their 40-man roster from the Rule 5 draft. Are there any surprises that stand out to you or any that you're like, oh, that might come back to bite you? Frankly, no. Um, <laughs> I... I <laughs> I think they had the 40-man space to add whoever they wanted to, essentially. Uh, I mean, you're going to have to add to the pitching staff, so you're not going to be able to fill up exactly. Um, I mean, you're not going to just fill up with everybody. But you had some space this year. Uh, enough guys leaving in free agency, enough guys who are uh, still DFA-able, essentially. Um, if you look at the top names who weren't selected, I, I don't expect any of them to be taken. If any of them are taken, I don't think any of them are a huge loss. Uh, probably the biggest one is Dane Acker, who I've never been a huge fan of. Um, the The Rangers have really leaked out a lot of very positive information on Acker and really tried to hype him up, which to me leads me towards the other direction and that they're trying to generate positive buzz so that they can move him is how I typically take that. Um, I think them not protecting him is another indication of that. Uh, he... The, the overall numbers have been okay, but he really has not missed the bats that, that you would hope. He has not saved the strikes on the way you would hope. It's hard to tell if that's all legitimately him or if it's just a matter of the of being constantly rusty because he's been injured so often. Um, but I did not expect him to be protected, and I, I don't think he'll be taken. I don't think he'd be a big miss if he was. Uh, sticking with pitchers, there's a couple more. Justin Slayton was a, a legitimate draft pick out of Fresno State in the fourth, fifth, sixth round, somewhere in that area. Uh, he he moved purely to relief this year and really had a strong season. Um, it's a good fastball. It's a good slider. Uh, he misses bats. He's also been home run prone even going back to his college days. But in 2023, he put up a 3-1-60 ERA and 51 innings in double A with, uh, gosh, 76 strikeouts to 16 walks, really strong, and then a 108 ERA and a, a quick cameo in AAA. So I could have seen that happening, but I know that there are not strong reviews on his makeup, uh, so that doesn't surprise me either. Um, and then Anthony Hoopy, uh, I'm not even going to try his, his hyphenated name. Uh, he, he hasn't pitched above single A. He's a relief pitcher, but it's not totally out of the realm of possibility he gets taken after a, a strong Arizona Fall League. Um, he's also 24, so a little bit on the older side, or he—I should say—he will be 24 sometime next year. Um, but he's been somewhat interesting for a couple of years now. Had a good fall league, so it's not totally impossible he'll be taken. But you wouldn't use a 40-man spot for him in the Ranger spot. Um, on the hitter side, the biggest one's going to be Davis Wenzel. Multi-positional versatility. Uh, Bat came back to him last year. I think he had 30 home runs in AAA. He did. Uh, the he was OVP the first in batting he was average the first Grand Rock player uh, since since Kyle Tucker to hit 30 home runs in a season for Triple A Round oh, Rock. So okay. So that's uh, I mean that's pretty impressive. And really, you look at it, and you could look at the top line numbers and think that maybe he was a little unlucky to hit 236. Uh, he offsets it with obviously the power, the 30 home runs, 241 ISO, and a, a really high walk rate. So his OBP isn't that bad. It's pretty strong, actually, um, and he can play good defense. Uh, he's a good, he's a passable shortstop, and I would imagine a good second baseman and third baseman. Now, uh, part of what makes the the top line numbers not as good as maybe you'd expect with his ratios is he pops out infield pop out. Uh, he pops out as much as people thought Ian Kinsler did. Um, so the bat <laughs> the batting average is always going to be a little bit uh, low due to that. 
Um, and you still wonder what he's going to look like against top level pitching, but it wouldn't shock me to see him taken and use as a utility infielder on a rebuilding team. Uh, it also wouldn't shock me if he goes unpicked that they try and move him for what value they can just because of the lot of infielders they have. But he's an interesting prospect, good utility uh, player. Uh, he, he could have a multi-year career as a utility guy, but not worth a 40-man spot in the Rangers position. Uh, yeah, the last I, one is Lane Krim. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just noting, I've been looking at the 40-man roster uh, on the Rangers official website, and all of these guys have pictures in Rangers caps except for one of the recently added guys. Can you guess which one doesn't? Of the four they added? Yep. Everybody else has a picture in a Rangers cap except for one of the players. I would say it's probably Antoine Kelly because he hasn't had a uh, big league um, spring training invite. Nope. It's Jose Corneo. <laughs> ah, well, that also makes sense. He also has not. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, anyway. The the last one worth noting uh, who wasn't protected is Blaine Krim. Uh, first baseman, professional hitter. Uh, if this was 2021, 2022, he'd have gotten the chance that Curtis Terry got. He probably would have done better with it. I think he could be a low-tier second division starter at first base for somebody, but that team is not the Rangers, and you don't put a backup first baseman uh, yet to make the big leagues on your 40-man roster unless he's a he's a better prospect than Krim. So I don't think he'll be taken. I do think it would be best for him to find another organization with a uh, clearer path to the big leagues. Um, but if the Rangers do keep him, it's good AAA depth. And if Lowe were to get injured, he would probably be your top fill-in for the position. Well, yeah, uh, I, I really like Blaine Cram. Just a really interesting guy. I love the uh, – remember last – not this year, but but last year in Frisco Media Day when he was talking about, you know, Positional first till he's like, yeah, I got my third baseman's glove. <laughs> they want me there knowing full well that uh, he is all, always going to be a first baseman, but with a legitimate, I think, bat that, that could end up having a big league future. Um, interesting guy, and I'm, I'm rooting for him, um, hoping mm -hmm. he gets his big league shot at some point. But let's talk about some other guys with a little bit brighter future than Blaine Krim. One guy I wanted to start out with. Actually, I'll, I'll let you pick. Who, who do you think is is the biggest story of the Rangers mind league system this year. Uh, if we were putting Evan Carter aside, uh, since he, he really became a huge story in the big leagues, uh, I'm going to say, is it Jack's Biggers hitting 12 home runs? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. You knew exactly where I wanted to go. That's, that's it. That's, that's the whole point. No, I, I, I was more leaning towards the other, um, I guess at, as of well, as of this recording, not as of when this comes out, he will be 22 year old outfielder, so um, older than than Evan Carter, but um, could also be very good, and has not played as many major league games as Evan Carter. He's an outfielder. You might have heard of him. His name is um, oh, who am I thinking of? Uh, okay, Wyatt Langford. You might have heard of him. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that sounds familiar. <laughs> Wyatt Langford, in case you don't know, is the Rangers' first round pick from this year. The uh, the baseball gods really smiled on the Rangers this year, not only them winning it all, but maybe getting some uh, even better long term news. Well, probably not better long term news because long term news doesn't matter because the Rangers won it all. And so literally nothing else matters forever. Um, but the Rangers lucking into the fourth pick with those lottery odds, selecting the outfielder out of Florida, who is still for some reason listed on baseball reference as a left fielder slash catcher slash center fielder. Center fielder is third after catcher, um, which he has not played catcher since, um, well, I, I think he just did in the Pensacola freshman summer year. league. Um, and maybe he played four games freshman year at Florida. So um, I don't know how much he was catching there. Um, let's see. Yeah, 12 games at, at catcher at, at uh, Charlottesville in um, S Valley League, Summer League. So, um, yeah, he has not caught since then. And I, I don't imagine he he does that uh, again with the Rangers. Coming up, we're going to look a little bit at why his season was so absolutely incredible and some other big stories on the farm this year. Practice word from our sponsors.
And we are back talking about the one, the only Wyatt Langford, who is making us all lick our chops and feel incredibly hashtag blessed that not only are the Rangers reigning champs, um, not only did they have the best offense in the American League last year, but it might be getting better because this Wyatt Langford kid is um, pretty darn special. And I know you have a, a much better perspective on, you know, history of minor leagues and the the ridiculous rate of like how unbelievably unprecedented what White Langford was doing in his first full season as a minor leaguer, minor leaguer going from a high A all the way to triple A and honestly looking like he might get a shot in the big leagues, if not for Evan Carter mm -hmm. being there uh, with the Adoles Garcia injury, like had Evan Carter not existed, I think it's White Langford coming up in the Adoles yeah. after the Adoles injury. Don't you? I think it might've been. Um, I also think that uh, it wasn't totally out of the realm of possibility he made his big league debut in the World Series. Um, <laughs> I know some of the national media had laughed that off, but they were keeping well, him around the team and working out, or at least they're keeping him in Arlington and working out just in case. Was he really? Because um, Chris Young oh, was yeah. saying that, oh, no, that that was never, he laughed. He literally laughed. And I was like, I, I know you thought about it, Chris. Don't don't lie and say you didn't right. at least think about it. Like <laughs> he he was working out in Arlington in October, so it it was within the realm of possibility. Um, he is. I, I just don't know what to say about him. Uh, he's a beast. Uh, you look at a guy. His numbers, his his counting numbers, his top line numbers were incredible, right? Him going from college to AAA and doing well not just doing well, but exceeding at every level is incredible. Um, him walking more than he struck out in his first minor league season, going all the way up the ladder, is incredible. Him putting up the power numbers, the stolen base numbers, incredible. Him looking better than build defensively, like he could be a above average left fielder, incredible. Um, the 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 underlying data, the I mean, his exit velo numbers and his swing decision numbers were also incredible. Like there's not anything he did that wasn't top, top notch. The, when you look at his data compared to other minor leaguers, there probably isn't anybody who has a better mix of swing decisions and hard hit data. Now, if you're looking at the best minor league prospect in the game, I think it's a discussion of two people. It's holiday whose data isn't quite as good, but he's younger and he plays shortstop and it's Langford. And that is crazy to have gotten with the seventh worst record last year and with the number four pick. Um, it, Dylan Cruz is great. Uh, he's going to be probably a good player, although I'm not as high on him as the industry. Uh, he's not better than Langford. Skeens is way too risky and not better than Langford. And Max Clark is too young to really tell, but he's not better than Langford. How did he fall to four? Like what, what is it that he did that is because obviously he like did everything that you could ask for. What were the, the concerns that he seem seemingly made look absolutely stupid? Um, the pre-draft um, concerns. Yeah. Well, he's not a pitcher who throws hundred miles an hour. So that, that hurt him against schemes. Um, <laughs> I don't know that there was really concerns with Langford, right? You had the, the five elite prospects everybody looked at. I think the Tigers maybe wanted to get somebody a little bit further away to meet with their timeline. I, I'm not sure. Maybe they fell in love with Clark as I, I know he's considered to have great makeup. Um, uh, Cruz, I think it was considered to be a little bit more, he's been on the scene longer. So there's, I guess there's more data and buy-in over more years with him than Langford. Um, and I think there was more concern with Langford's gloves than I have after watching him for a couple weeks in Frisco. Yeah. Is, is he a guy who could play some center field or, I mean, not that he's like going, cause you have, you know, Leody and Evan Carter, but like, were the two of them to, you know, stop existing, <laughs> would he um, be able to play a passable center field or even a good center field? He, he might play a passable one in time. It's one of those things where outfield is still fairly new to him, but he has the athleticism to do well. Uh, he, he's quick. Um, and he's he's twitchy enough where he can be a good outfielder. Uh, it's it's going to take some time to and dedication to it to knock off some of the to catch up to people who've been doing it for longer. 
But you see people with this athleticism do it. Lionel DeShields was a terrible athlete, outfielder in the minor leagues, and then he was a pretty darn good center fielder. He's obviously quicker than than Langford, but I think he could get to a point where maybe at his peak he's a plus left fielder and average to slightly below center fielder. How is his arm? Because one thing I, I think about in him long term is eventually moving over to right field whenever Adolis is contracted up, or maybe the Rangers sign Adolis to a lifetime contract, and we don't have to worry about that because he is a World Series hero and an ALCS hero, and maybe is a World Series hero again. Maybe it's another walk off home run in a later World Series the Rangers win. Um, but is right field somewhere you think he could play eventually? You know, I'm not sure. I never saw him on Cork one at Frisco. Um, Everything I saw was a t- to him was a can of corn, or if it wasn't, then it was him tracking back on a ball with nobody on base. Um, so I never really got to see him show off the arm in his you know twelve whole games in Frisco. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think they talked mostly about him in left, so I w- I would gander a guess that it's not great, but I don't have anything more than an educated guess on that one. Okay. Well, the other big storyline from this minor league season is well, there's they're basically. Th- Four main storylines, and it's for the top five Rangers prospects. Um, Evan Carter, we all we all know the deal with him. Um, he's he's pretty darn good. White Langford is pretty special. Um, Sebastian Walcott having an incredible season, his age 17 season, first pro season, makes it all the way up from the Dominican League, Dominican Summer League to high A Hickory. What do you make of his season and how? That is also yet another unprecedentedly good season from Rangers minor leaguer. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I love Bam Bam. Uh, I'm I, I'm so in on him. So it, this was a very high variance prospect, right? Like this could crash and burn, and in two years we're looking at a guy like, oh man, what could have been? It also could be in two years we're looking at a guy like that guy's gonna be a superstar next year. Um, it's super high variance, but the tools are so loud. Guys his age just do not hit the ball as hard as he does. They just don't. It It is so special. Uh, so is he really ready for high A? No. He swings and misses too much. Um, and he's he's really still pretty raw defensively. But he seems like he's willing to take a walk. He has the absolute crap out of the ball. He has a bazooka for an arm. He's a good athlete and runner. Uh, his footwork is so super raw, but he, he shows some feel for good hands. If this clicks, you're looking at a generational type player. If it clicks halfway, you're looking at an everydayer. Um, and it, it could also not click at all. Uh, so you, you wait and see what happens, but he also seems to have the kind of the attitude of the, the new school superstar, um, where he's a little bit more flashy and showy and, and confident. And that would be, It'd be interesting to see that play out with the Rangers team, which is so, uh, so not that. Um, but I mean, he, he's talk he talks and he's like, yeah, I'll be in the big leagues by 20. Um, and hopefully, hopefully that happens. Cause if it does, he's, he's on the track to, uh, to really maximize his just exceptional talent. That's insane because in the big leagues by 20 is in three years and he's uh-huh. already in a high A his first full, full season. Like, it sounds nuts, but then what he did this year was absolutely nuts as well. And one guy who it seems like he didn't have the best regular season for most of it, but then took some time off, got his head right, got his mechanics right, got whatever was wrong right in Jack Leiter. Where are you at on Jack Leiter at this very moment? I'm still in Prove It. Um, it was nice to see him come back. It was nice to see him do better. He was still doing better throwing 75, 80% fastballs. Uh, it's a really good fastball that's not going to be sustainable at the top level. Uh, so I want to see him be able to come out and mix and match more with the slider and curveball and land him for strikes and keep the fastball at the top of the zone consistently and see that happen for April, for May, for June, July. He does that for two, three months, consistently start after start. I'm going to be all the way back in. Until that happens, I'm still – Still hesitant. That's fair. I am cautiously optimistic on Jack Leiter. The stuff still being there is nice. Um, him having that kind of ceiling is is very fun, and it, it's nice to dream that maybe eventually the Rangers will be able to develop one passable starting pitcher uh, at some point in their future. Now, let's end this the way we do 
all of our episodes picking a random ranger. We will choose each choose the most random ranger we can think of that we have not thought of before or sometimes that we have thought of before. This guy is a ranger only in his big league career. Only a ranger in 2008 and then took a year off and 2010 played a combined 45 games over those two seasons, a 699 OPS. He is a guy who played catcher. He was born in uh, Barquisimeto, <laughs> Barquisimeto, Venezuela. Totally butchered that. Um, he is 39 years old. Can you think of this Rangers catcher who wore number 51? Oh, wait. Is it Max Ramirez? You're darn you're right. It, 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 it is. is Max Ramirez. Okay. One of the too many catchers. All right. I, uh, yeah, what was it? Oh, oh, seven. Where they traded for Ramirez, and you had T Garden up in the upper levels, and gosh, Salt so many, yeah. and you had Salt Lamakia. I mean, just catcher pipeline. We thought. <laughs> oh, it took uh, all, all the um, uh, Jonah Heim is the heir apparent to uh, Max Ramirez. <laughs> who is who is your random ranger for the day? So I'm gonna keep it in the spirit of the Rule Five Draft, um, and and get a Rule Five Draft guy the Rangers had. Uh, so this guy was drafted by the Tigers in the 12th round of 2015. He was then traded by the Tigers alongside former Ranger Leonis Martin to Cleveland mm -hmm. for one Willie Castro. Uh, that offseason, he was popped by the Mets in the Roll 5 draft. They decided they did not want to keep him around, and the Rangers claimed him. Uh, 2019 is the year that he pitched for the Rangers. Did not make it through the season, partially due to his uh, 22 and a third innings, including 18 walks and a 725 year A. So he was returned to the, uh, I guess it would be to the Cleveland Guardians, um, at which point he did not make it back to the majors until six and a third innings with the 2022 Cincinnati Reds. Can you oh name God. this right-handed reliever? Kyle Dowdy. Yes, indeed. And oh uh, I remember that season I saw a Kyle Dowdy jersey walking around, and I said, that must be a family member. And then they There's... walked in the family section, and I, I felt I felt – gratified uh can you imagine just a random kyle dowdy fan just hanging out it's actually not kyle dowdy's family it's just a, a different friend and family member of the rangers who just really <laughs> love kyle dowdy uh mad respect just that is kyle dowdy guy. that is a a solid poll but grant this was a more than solid minor league and major league th season thank you so much for joining me thank you all so much for listening and subscribing and until next time don't forget to enjoy world series champion texas rangers baseball